All right, Gen Chem people, we are going to do a simulation today because the simulation that I normally use is not available. So we're going to do a simulation on different types of atomic models to try and wrap up this atomic model, atomic theory unit. So today we're going to get into FET and use their atomic model simulation. So I want to show you how this is done. So what I want you to do is when you get on your Chromebook, I want you to go to FET. So you're going to type in FET, FET.colorado.edu. So FET.colorado.edu, and you're going to want to go there. And then the SIM that we do normally doesn't show up because I usually have it signed up. So just to do HTML. Sims, this is not an HTML sim. This is a sim that actually works on creep and it will work on your laptop or on your Chromebooks, but it will take a while to download. So what I want you to do is we're going to go up here to the, um, the micro, the, the looking glass and we're going to type in atomic models. We're going to get a list of all their atomic model simulations. And when you look at the simulations that we have on the atomic models, it's near the, near the end, not quite the end, but we're going to look at the models of the hydrogen atom. So this sim right here, models of the hydrogen atom, is where we're going to want to go. Okay, so that will take a second to come up. And you're going to want to hit play. And it will take a while for this simulation to load. So don't worry, it will load and it will work on your Chromebook. I have tried it on my Chromebook and it seems fine, but it does take a minute, so be patient. Now, I also have attached to this module, I have the Word document that if you are not here in person that I want you to print out and fill out. Um, if you don't print it out, you can put it up on your screen, edit it, Make sure that you're using a different color font so that I can tell your responses really easily from the questions. So just make sure that you're writing in a different color font. Make it blue or green or something, something bright so I can see. Okay, so this is the FET. And you're going to go through and you're going to follow the directions on the worksheet that I have handed out for you. And you're going to fill out your diagram here. So there are some pre-lab questions that you might want to look at first. The first page is pre-lab questions. You're going to want to look at those, and there are a couple of calculations and a couple diagrams that you are going to need to write on here. And the diagrams and the calculations are some of the, di some of the same diagrams and calculations that we've done in your notes. So you might want to look at your notes from um, pages 18 to page, where did we end off? Page 20, 28. So pages 18 to pages 28 will give you a good idea of some of the diagrams and things that you need to put in here. Okay. On the second page of the printout that I have attached here is the procedure. And it we've already done part of the procedure. We've gotten into the models of the hydrogen atom. And we're going to want to click show the spectrometer. So show the spectrometer is down here. We want to show that for sure. Let me move this picture of me so that you can see that. And you're going to want to hover over experiment. So we're going to keep this black box here. Okay. So you want to keep this lever on the experiment and you are going to click on this light gun and you're going to have white light going through this black box. Now you're going to notice eventually that some of these spectral lines down here will start showing up. Okay, we can actually have um, we can have the light hit this faster. So if you want to speed it up, you can make it hit faster so that these spectral lines will show up a little bit faster. But you're going to want to run the sim for about 60 seconds at least for the spectral lines to really show up. Notice we were getting more and more spectral lines showing up here. And you'll eventually get this spectrum 
that you'll be able to see and answer these questions from. Okay. So once you are done with that experiment setting, you're, it's going to ask you to do a bunch of other things. It will eventually ask you to not have it on the experiment setting, but have it on the prediction setting. And on the prediction setting, we can use all these different atomic models that we've talked about over the, the course of the last couple of weeks. We can look at John Dalton's billiard ball model and see what spectrum he would have expected. We can look at JJ Thompson's plum pudding model and see what kind of spectrum he would have predicted. We can look at the classical solar system model and see what Rutherford would have predicted. We can look at Nels Bohr's model and see the spectrum that Nels Bohr would have predicted and see which of these models actually match the spectrum that that black box gives us. Now that black box is what really we observe. And we're trying to make sure what we observe is most consistent with the models. So I want you to compare and contrast each of these models and see if they really do give us what we observe. So we've got our Bohr model here. Notice we've got some spectral lines going. Then we have a model that we really haven't talked about. We have the Louis de Broglie model, which didn't think of the electron as a particle like Bohr did. Bohr thought of the electron as a particle orbiting around that nucleus. De Broglie thought of the electron more like a wave, like a white wave. So you're going to see that we've got wave functions going for de Broglie models. And then the last model that I want you to compare and contract with what we really observed is Erwin Schrodinger's model. Sch Schrodinger now doesn't even really think of it as a wave or a particle. He thinks of the electron as both a wave and a particle combined, and he looks at the probability of that area of where the electrons and things will, will be. So this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be filling out this worksheet. You could either fill it out in on paper if you want to print it out that way and scan them in, or you can fill it out on the Word document and upload it to me. So good luck, have fun with the simulation. I think it's really informative to look at all these different atomic models that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks and see what really comes closest to what we really observe. Compare and contrast and see if you can think of which model really gives us the best representation of what's really happening. We'll see you next time. Bye.